everyone. Welcome to the second event in our Global is Local Cook and Learn series, where we highlight our local global business councils and their regional recipes. Today we are joined by members from the International Advisory Group at Houston Association of Realtors. Yeah. Ranked as the fourth largest city in America, Houston is home to one of the youngest, fastest growing, and most diverse populations anywhere in the world. Today, Houston's International Advisory Group will show us how to grill Texas style while sharing regional updates of foreign buyer and investment activity, what makes Houston so attractive on a global level, and how HER is serving its rich diversity of its local community. Joining us today are our panelists from HAR, Susan and Nora, 2018 Chair of the International Advisory Group, Pius Dawson, 2019 Chair of the International Advisory Group, Ed Eakin, 2020 Chair of the International Advisory Group, and Teresa Hill, 2021 Chair of the International Advisory Group. Susan will be serving as a moderator for this event, so if you have any questions for our panelists, please submit them in the Q&A section below. Thank you again for joining us, and now, to get things started, our panelists. Hey, good morning, everybody. Ed Aiken with the Aiken Group here in Houston, Texas. I'm excited today to share some old-time secrets uh, on how to prepare a brisket and uh, throw it in the smoker with my global friends here in Houston, Texas. I want to uh, hand it off to Susan so she can explain the rules of the webinar today. So with that, Susan, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We have a great program scheduled for you. We have a real Texas brisket sitting on the chop block and we will be listening to Ed Eakin tell us how he's going to prepare the brisket and put it in this giant smoker that is smoking as we speak. If you're out there listening, we would appreciate it if you would participate in the conversation. Get into your chat box and tell us where you're listening from. Which city in Texas are you listening from? Let us know where you are. And if you have any questions as he's preparing the meat or as we're going over some of the data, talking about Houston real estate, please feel free to get into your chat box and ask questions. Okay, thanks, Susan. I'd like to start off with the ingredients that we're going to start off with today, and then we'll go through the process. So um, today we have an injector to inject some apple juice. Uh, we have some mustard that we'll spread across the brisket along with some uh, rubs. There's a ton of rubs out there. Everybody has their favorite. One of my favorites is a pecan rub and a te Texas brisket rub. And then even though our brisket won't need sauce, you always got to have some good barbecue sauce. So, um, and then last but least, some wax paper that we will use uh, during the process. So the first thing that we start to do is we inject the brisket with apple juice. Um, just going through the brisket and uh, putting apple juice around the brisket. Why, why do you put in apple juice? Um, we put in apple juice uh, for a couple reasons. First, to keep the uh, brisket moist during the smoking. And then second of all, the apple juice will help break down the meat a little bit to uh, make it tender. So you just, there's no right amount or wrong amount of apple juice to put in. Sometimes I will inject Cajun butter in there, sometimes salt and pepper. Uh, you can pretty much inject whatever you want in the brisket, but it will uh, help keep the moist, uh, the brisket moist through the process. So we just continue to go on and pull some more. Oops. As you noticed, um, this brisket, I have it uh, skinny side up because the way we will throw it into the smoker is fat side up. And why do we do that? We'll do that so the uh, brisket naturally bastes itself uh, throughout the process. So we'll start with the skinny side up. Lots of juice in there. Okay, next up, uh, we'll start with mustard, okay? We'll cover this entire brisket with mustard. As you can see, this is where the hands get a little messy. I forgot it. Oh, there's a towel there. What does the mustard do, Ed? The mustard uh, here again serves a couple uh, things too. First of all, it will help seal the juices in the brisket. 
as the brisket smokes uh, on the smoker. So it's going to help seal the brisket. Also, it's going to help hold the different seasonings on the brisket. So mustard helps seal the brisket? Seal, yep. the seal the juices into the brisket. Seal the juices into the brisket. We're going to start off with John Henry's pecan rub. You can cake this stuff on. It, there's, you can't put too much on there because it's just going to add a lot of taste and it's going to help with the bark of the brisket. As the brisket smokes, uh, when you pull it out of the smoker, you'll see a big thick bark. So we want to just cover it. Like. Okay, so you put on pecan rub to Which, give it flavor and make the bark? Yeah, help make the bark. Then we're going to throw on a little brisket rub. Uh, there, today we're cooking with pecan wood and hickory. Uh, here again, some uh, smokers like to use oak, some like to use apple, cherry. Today we have a, a mixture of pecan and hickory, and it's just something that through the years uh, I've enjoyed using. Is, is, is that similar to how they make whiskey in oak barrels and things? So you're using different woods? Different woods to get a different flavor. flavor. Okay. Absolutely. Ed, we have a question. They're asking, are there any other things you might inject into the meat besides apple juice? Yes, uh, a lot of times I'll do Cajun butter. Okay, um, other times I'll just do butter with salt and pepper. Uh, a lot of people really like a heavy uh, black pepper taste, so you can inject it with black pepper. Can't have enough of this mustard on. And as a kid, I never did like mustard. Uh, and it, I wouldn't really want to eat a brisket when I saw mustard being rubbed on it, but you don't taste the mustard at all. It's strictly here to help us keep the juices in and add flavor. We have a comment from uh, a listener, Alex. Alex says, I inject uh, garlic butter sometimes. Mm. Mm. And he also does whiskey sometimes. Whiskey. Oh, that's my man. <laughs> One thing I've done in the past is I've uh, pulled jalapeno juice uh, from a, uh, a jar of jalapenos. Jalapeno Ooh. juice? Yeah. Sergio also says um, he injects whiskey sometimes, and he does whiskey into turkey when he does turkey. Wow. Something to try for Thanksgiving. Okay. As we get finished here, now the brisket is uh, ready to uh, throw into the smoker. A lot of people ask how long and what temperature. Uh, we generally want to try to keep about a 225 degree temperature uh, during the whole process. Uh, we cook um, the brisket an hour and 15 minutes per pound, fat side up, so Ooh, it based. Wait, 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 slower, slower. One hour, what, say again? One hour, one hour, 15 minutes per pound. A brisket. So if you have a 10 pound brisket, you know, your first 10 hours and then another two and a half hours. And we're trying to get the interior temperature to the brisket to about 150, 160. So we use a thermometer and we just check it, you know, throughout the process. Okay, get the temperature to 150, 160. 150 to 160 degrees. All right, hang on. We have some questions. Uh, Sergio is asking, does it matter how much fat the brisket has on it? Do I need to look for a piece with not a lot of fat or a lot of fat? That's always personal taste. Some people do not really like all the fat on there. You can grab a brisket that's fat and trim it. And at the same time, a lot of butchers will trim the brisket for you. So if you want the fat, personally, I like the fat in there because it's going to provide a juicier brisket at the end of the process and at the same time we can always trim that off after it comes out of the smoker so either or personal taste okay we have another question it's regarding that syringe can you hold up the syringe uh -huh. now that must be a special syringe because that's a very large syringe or is that a horse syringe <laughs> <laughs> you know you can find these at barbecues galore home depot uh any uh, uh kitchen store uh there's a whole bunch of ones that you can purchase at the same time when you go just to Kroger or Tom Thumb 
and you buy the Cajun butter and it comes with a little syringe, uh, you can use that one as well. This one is just, it's a little heavier duty. It really, uh, it's bigger, so it allows me to um, throw some seasons into whatever I'm um, injecting. So this is why I like this one. I think that means you're a heavy duty barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> we like to smoke. So first uh, brisket I've ever smoked with a bad wing. So uh, it's a little bit difficult. But with us having it prepped now, I'd like to hand it over to Teresa so she can share some Houston facts about real estate here. Thank you, I can't wait, that's nice. Yes, so just um, some Houston demographic, global demographic uh, information. Um, Houston, as we know, is one of the most diverse populations anywhere in the world. And um, the, out of our 7 million plus residents, one in four is foreign born. So that's, that's pretty significant. Uh, Houston's uh, metropolitan, metropolitan area is home to the nation's fourth largest Hispanic Latino population at more than 2.6 million. And just to give you um, some percentages, the Hispanic Latino uh, population is about 37.6% of our population. Um, Anglos, 35.5%. African Americans, 17%. Asians, 7.8%. And others, 2.1%. So again, very, very diverse uh, city that we have here. Um, in addition to our diversity, Houston offers a well-developed suite of key global industries, including energy, life science, manufacturing, logistics, and of course, aerospace. Uh, we have our um, spaceport, the Ellington Airport launch site. Um, and then of course, we have um, our two international airports, George Bush and William P. Hobby. Um, we do 184 nonstop destinations to 37 countries from Houston. Uh, I think that's pretty significant as well. Um, some other statistics. 17,000 plus Houston firms report foreign ownership. We have 17 foreign banks um, from 10 different nations. And we have 91 countries that have official government repre representation here in Houston. Um, again, we are just such a diverse city. Uh, I think we're very blessed. And um, I think Pius is going to talk more about um, Texas stats. And, Texas and, stats? Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it over to Pius. So Texas is one of the few states without a personal state or corporate income tax which makes the cost of doing business very competitive. The high end of the market staged the strongest performance, pulling up overall pricing along the way. However, with a decline in the number of listings for sale coming on the market, inventory has now fallen to its lowest level in five years, setting the stage for moderating sales in the weeks ahead, despite historical low interest rates. 9,195 single family homes sold in August this year compared to 8,673 a year earlier. That accounted for a 6% increase and marked the third consecutive month of positive sales. We can do some more stats later, but- uh, We actually I... have questions from the panelists. Go ahead. All right, we have, we actually have a listener tuned in from Portugal. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Portugal. Uh, that's really exciting. We have that's an international so cool. person tuned in. Uh, they wanted to say hello to Ed and the group. Um, we have a question about this, uh, the, the, what is that that you call the stuff in there? The charcoal or the? Uh, wood. Wood. Yes. Okay, so they're asking um, wood or charcoal. So it's, is it wood chips or wood? Wood logs. wood it's, logs. It's going to be wood logs because they're going to provide the smoke. So it's it's going to be offset where you light the fire off to the side and the smoke will go across the brisket to okay. cook it. So it's wood lo logs. logs. It's wood logs and, and the ones that you're using in there are? Or hickory and pecan today. Okay. And where do you get that? 
Um, you can buy really all over. You can go to Home Depot. We'll have bags of logs. Uh, your grocery stores will have bags of logs. HEB has and it. And HEB, Tom Thumb. Uh, but, but so, and then there's people on the side of the road that will have uh, <laughs> uh, things that they will actually deliver. You can have a cord of uh, firewood delivered to your house. Okay. And is there a specific kind of wood that you like, like cherry versus pecan versus anything else? Yeah. My two favorite are hickory and pecan. Hickory and pecan. Yeah. To add uh, a sweet taste. Okay. And they're asking, why wood over charcoal, for example? Charcoal doesn't provide smoke. Charcoal is more of a heat uh, product. So, you know, you set charcoal and you'll set meat on top where when you smoke, uh, like in a smoker that's behind us, you'll light the fire at one side and the smoke will go across the brisket to cook the brisket over top. Okay, so that's why you use wood, not charcoal. Uh, maybe one more question before we go into more stats. Um, this could be a funny question, I'm not sure. It's, uh, what does a cheap person bring to a barbecue? Uh, paper plates. <laughs> <laughs> Ball of whiskey. Well, speaking of, speaking of things that you eat with a barbecue, we could go over some of the things that are sitting up on this uh, countertop. Teresa, do you want to tell them what we normally traditionally eat sure. with a brisket? Sure. So, um, Texas barbecue is kind of a, um, a category all in itself. And then there's barbecue sides that are very common, uh, such as some type of beans, baked beans. Um, I've heard people do ranch style beans, beans um, that have just cooked in a pot for eight hours in the day. Right. Um, we also have potato salad which is another uh, very popular barbecue side. Um, I think with barbecue, they usually make their potato salad with um, mustard as opposed to mayonnaise. Yes. Uh, again, again, I think it's personal preference. And then of course, coleslaw. Uh, that's kind of a, a barbecue staple as well. I agree, I agree. And we have and then, a special couple yes. of things up there. We can go over the last one later, but what kind of salad is that, Pius? That is a tomato and onion um, salad in a balsamic vinaigrette. Um, made it all myself yesterday, so I, know. Uh, I hope it's, it's going to be good. Yummy. I hope it's going to be good. You skipped the company uh, meeting yesterday to stay <laughs> home and, I was, I was playing and make a salad and make yeah. the special dessert. I don't know. Do we want to? Do we want to spill the beans on the special dessert right now, or do you want to wait until the end? Uh, well, we can, seeing that we're on the sides. Um, Pius has made a very special dessert. It comes from a recipe all the way from England, from where he's from. Because this is a global uh, event, I thought I'd throw in something from across the pond. So um, as you can see, we made, um, I made a trifle and uh, this took me three days to make. Um, so what it consists of practically is the bottom, it's in different layers. And um, a trifle goes back many centuries in England where they threw in all the leftovers uh, to make up a, a, a dessert. Including the barbecue brisket? No, not oh. about there. <laughs> no. So the, the first layer is, uh, it's like a sponge cake that is, has been soaked in um, orange liqueur. Mm. So in, in this case, we, we used uh, a very famous brand. Um, and then we surround the um, bowl with lady fingers. And then there are fresh strawberries um, that were infused in 101% rum and then covered in strawberry jelly. Um, once that was set, then the next layer is, um, it's a vanilla uh, cream, but I use the English version birds custard, um, which is quite delicious. And then once that was set, um, then we put on the layer of Cool Whip uh, over on the top. So I've only made this of like five times in my whole life. But oh, it's, wow, it's, we're honored. I love one of five times. It's really done on special occasions. And I thought, you know, this was special. And I wanted to share this with my friends. That is exciting. Thank you, Lady fingers, strawberries, fresh cream. And what am I missing? Um, you got the, the pound cake on the bottom. That was um, 
that's been soaked in um, orange liqueur. Orange liqueur. And, and then you have the fresh strawberries. You have a layer of fresh strawberries that were infused with uh, rum, um, a demerara rum. Rum. <laughs> and then they have the strawberries are then covered in jelly, strawberry jelly, jello. Jelly. And then you have the vanilla cream, which English custard, and then the cool one to cover the whole thing. Then we sprinkled some sprinkles on top just to wow. make it look pretty. How many days did it take you to make that? That, that was three days. Wow. I think yeah. it would take you longer to make the <laughs> dessert than we did to cook the brisket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because every layer has to set. Okay, so, you know, once you, you have the jello, it goes in the fridge and you have to wait for it to set before you can put the next one on top. Otherwise, it'll all just sink Fall together. In. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I like the sprinkles on top, too. Yeah, it looks very, very festive, very know, festive. We have a question about wood block, uh, wood logs versus wood pellets. Pellets. Okay, yeah. Today, all of a sudden, uh, these pellet grills have become real popular. The two probably biggest brands are Traegar or Z Grills. So you buy a bag of pellets. Here again, you can get um, pecan, hickory. They have what they call a competition mix. Uh, there's oak, there's just about anything. And it really makes it super easy to smoke uh, versus a traditional smoker where you're adding logs and having to work the fire to keep it exactly where you are. These new pellet grills such as Traegar you put in the pellets, you set it at whatever temperature. Like I said, we like 225 for our temperature and you walk away. And uh, then you just come back and check every now and then. So uh, pellet grills are, are definitely becoming really popular. Okay, thank you very much. And now back to some fun facts right. about Houston real estate. So international home sales added 6.6 .6 billion to the Texas economy from April 2019 to March of 2020. According to the Texas International Home Buyers Report recently released by Texas Realtors. So I hope everybody's had a chance to read that report. It's very informative. Texas also ranked third in the nation for home sales from international homeowners behind Florida and Cap uh, California. 8% of home sales in Texas were from international homeowners. Months of inventory fell to a record 2.4 months with inventory for homes priced less than 300,000 side into less than 1.8 months. Texas average days on market <laughs> decreased to 57 days, corroborating robust demand despite the pandemic. The real estate center single family housing sales projected projection expects sales to rebound 13.1% in September. So how are we doing with the- I have a question about the brisket, right? It was sitting on that, that whatever that thing is Chop. called, a chopping, chopping block. Board. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see him put it in there. Did he put it in there? He did. Did you, did you he wrapped it? I put it, I put it in there and it's smoking away. Okay. Now we have not finished brisket that we are getting ready to show off. But when they, when they put it in there, do they just put that big raw thing in there? Or yes. did they wrap it up and put it in there? For, uh, for the we first, went over how we put Yeah, it for the uh, first six, seven, eight hours, we're going to put it uh, in the smoker unwrapped. Unwrapped. Yes. And then at a point, depending on when it starts to dry out a little bit, we will uh, wrap it in wax paper. And today we wax or uh, wrap it in, in a peach wax paper. Okay. Right. So at the beginning, you put it in just like that, mm -hmm. not wrap, not in foil, not right. in wax paper. You just put that whole raw thing yeah. in there. Whole, whole brisket, yes. And then you shut it. And then you wait several hours how many hours do you wait? and how often do you do you check the temperature ed um for the first six seven hours it's not even going to be close to 150 160 so uh we start checking it about when we think it's ready the last okay. hour or so apart as we're trying to hit 160. okay we're done with facts got any more questions before we take a peek at this we 
do have facts. Do we want to do some facts, T? Yeah. So I will talk about uh, the Houston trade. Um, we have $237 billion in Houston total trade. Um, so imports and exports. 2019 imports totaled $85.2 billion. And our exports totaled $151.8 billion. Um, we have 15 foreign governments maintain trade in commercial buildings, I mean offices, sorry, and 41 active international chambers of commerce or trade associations. Uh, we also have 18 uh, sister city relationships um, where we're always promoting opportunities uh, across the world. We have seven in Asia, seven in Europe, two in the Americas, one in Australia, and one in Africa. Do we do any global outreach with any of these sister cities? Of course, yeah. We, um, unfortunately, this year it's, it's been, yeah. um, you know, not as, um, not as accessible, <laughs> we'll say, because of COVID. Thank you very much, coronavirus. Uh, but last year, the four of us, we went to Belize, uh, on a mission trip, and Ed, you just recently um, went to Mexico. Riviera Maya. Maya. Uh -huh. um, you want to tell us a little bit about that trip? Yeah, so last year we did a trade mission trip as our international advisory group here in Houston. We had, I think, 12 realtors go down, so the purpose of this trip was to go down and meet with are um, the association that uh, NAR has uh, um, given us to work with. And uh, we started on the north side of Belize and worked our way down south. Uh, with each stop, we're meeting with realtors slash brokers, fellow CIPS uh, brokers um, in Belize. And then we're looking at and touring properties. Uh, last week, uh, I was there actually in, in the Riviera Maya this time. And uh, we did something a little bit different where we uh, hosted a bunch of NFL football players to look at property throughout the Riviera Maya. I actually saw a ton of fun. Of I yes. saw you and those NFL players yes. having a ball. <laughs> hey, speaking of CIPS, um, I just put up in the chat who out there has their CIPS designation? We all have ours, yep. is that right? Yep. Yeah, we all have ours. Houston is actually going to be sponsoring a CIPS. Who knows anything about that? I can tell you it starts uh, October 26th with our good friend Richard Miranda. It's five days this year. Unfortunately, uh, we're doing it uh, virtually versus in person. I think most of us can agree that we all would rather do it in person, but we're going to have a great time doing it virtually uh, starting October 26th. Okay, so October 26th, and if you don't have your CIPS designation, who can tell them why they need their CIPS? Well, I'll start. Um, so I have been in the business for a long, long time, going on 30 years. Um, <clears throat> besides the Texas Realtor Leadership Program, TRLP, CIPS is the best uh, course that I have ever taken. It, um, first of all, it's just so informative because if you think about it, probably everyone has done some sort of action and they may not even realize it. So um, CIPS just gives you a lot of information about um, about the different the different countries and how they how they do real estate and how we we can help with, with the incoming and the outgoing um, transactions. Um, it also gives you a lot more understanding of what's happening out there in the world. Like you know, you said we have somebody from Portugal. You know they're, five, they're seven hours ahead of us. Yeah. Um, you know, so they're in early evening, um, but you also get to learn you know, the different customs from these countries, and uh, very, very informative. Um, is is there still time for them to sign up uh, for? Yes, yes, we still have. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. you can actually go to our website, which is har.com slash edu as yeah. an education okay. edu, okay. and you can get on. Um, are we offering a 
deal or is it just? I think there is a, a discount because yeah. uh, yes, so we're, discount we're offering because it at three ninety nine, which oh, wow. is normally seven ninety five. So, yeah. so a great deal to sign up. And I like to add a little bit about CIPS. Um, I earned my CIPS back in two thousand fourteen in Cabo, and I earned mine to sell pretty beaches around the world. What I didn't realize was we are all sitting here in Houston, Texas, which just happens to be a huge opportunity for international buyers and sellers here in our city. So uh, it's taken me a while, but I think my CIPS may help me more with local international buyers and sellers. So just a great reason here in Houston, Texas to grab your CIPS. And don't forget about the referral aspect of it. Too, right? CIPS is um, Around the a world. higher standard uh, as far as working with international clients. And they tend to refer clients cross borders mm -hmm. to other CIPS as it means. So yes. that's also a very good reason why you'd want to get that. Absolutely. And also, too, just a little shout out to Richard. If you have not taken a class from Richard, you're, you're, you're in for a treat for sure. He's a great instructor. He's very engaging. Uh, he keeps your attention and very informative too. And CIPS Teacher of the Year in 2018 yes. or 19? Um, I believe it was 2019. Yeah, he was instructor, so. CIPS instructor. And then of course he is our incoming um, HAR chair as well. One of the benefits of CIPS is networking. So what a great opportunity to take our CIPS class and network with our incoming president. So if you haven't met Richard, this is a great way to meet and capture all the knowledge that uh, Richard has. So I would highly, highly recommend uh, taking this opportunity to sign up. We have some questions about the Houston Sister City Program. Does anyone know more about that? Uh, what is the question? Um, it says Houston city, city, sister cities. Um, that sounds cool. Um, what is that? Uh, well, the sister city association, it, it's a... Uh, How do we establish it, the relationship? It's, it's a global association and, uh, and Houston it, heads up that for the city of Houston through the mayor's office. And uh, I, I believe that a Greater Houston Partnership yes. is very involved in it as well. Yes, they are. Okay. So what do I say? Sister Cities um, is through the Greater Houston Partnership and, and, and the Mayor's Office. Houston. Yeah. Mayor's office. And so do you all know off the top of your heads who some of our sister cities are? Um. I do not. Um, I will tell you our association that uh, we're assigned to is Belize. And Belize, uh, just some fun facts uh, for Belize. Um, the, the first language is English, so it makes it easy for foreigners to move there. The second language is uh, Spanish and then Creole. So Belize and uh, there's actually two um, associations there and they have been very, very interested and very always asking us questions and reaching out to us about <laughs> education and how they can educate their realtors so that they can serve their customers better and at the same time network with the realtors here and Houston. So uh, we've enjoyed that relationship with Belize. So some of the cities we have uh, that are actual sister cities for Houston is Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, uh, Baku in Azerbaijan, um, that was formed in 1976, Basra in Iraq, uh, Shipa in Japan, Grampian region of Aberdeen. Um, so it's not really a city, that's just a whole region. Uh, in Scotland. Um, Who is it for Japan? Do you remember? Um, GB, C H I B A. Oh, Chiba. That's Chiba. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, suburb of Tokyo. Um, it, you have Leipzig in Germany, which is one of the new um, states over in Germany. Um, you've got Nice in France, Perth in Australia, Shenzhen in China, uh, in Norway. The question actually now she's uh, clarifying yeah. saying, 
mainly to see if we as realtors benefit in any way from the relationship. It is basically what you as a realtor um, decide to do with your CIPS. I mean, there's, there's people, they take the course and they don't do anything. Um, it's literally up to you to get down and dirty and, and find out, you know, if you have sister city that like in Aberdeen, reach out to, um, you know, a city in, in Aberdeen, find out who the realtors are there, the brokers or the associations and build up that relationship. Um, you can then coordinate um, outbound and inbound mission trips with that city. Um, and, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get the mayor's office on board. <laughs> These are just things for, that you can do. Yeah. I, so, I would also recommend just, um, especially if your association, if your local association uh, does have an international, um, you know, arm, to get involved. Um, mm. Because, I mean, look, look at the doors that have been open for us. We, right. we yeah. visit... We visit the councils. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've we've had in international the guests at the rodeo yeah. that have come yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all about relationships. It, it is. really is. Yeah. And, is. And you know, speaking of the rodeo, um, I'm actually on the international committee, and so there's a special room for international guests, and it's a great place to invite all of the people that we know from around the world during that week to come to Houston and see the rodeo and hang out with us and really get to know them as people, build the relationship. Everything starts with the relationship, but being able to invite them over to a big event like that right. and getting to Absolutely. like entertain and you know be hospitable to them, it goes a long way. Right. And that's, that's where the doors start opening, right? That's yeah. where the doors start that's opening right. and where you know he might meet a developer there and right. get the listing agreement for all all of that guy's development, yeah. you know, for example. Um, it, yeah. it happens. It yeah. happens in that room all the time. The majority of people that come uh, that are invited to that uh, international pavilion uh, at the rodeo, these are all affluent clientele that already have multiple homes all over the world because they're flying into the Houston rodeo in their private jets, bringing along their livestock on their jets. Or, or, or <laughs> so, to buy cattle. You know, this this is you know just what is happening, um, and we've already made those connections. Right, but um, I mean, in in regards to her question, you know, nothing's really set up, ready to go as far as sister cities goes. It is up to you, right? Yeah. So if you were to like, I speak Japanese. If I were to like, I haven't done it, but I probably should reach out to Chiba Japan and see who are the realtors out there, or maybe invite them over for an incoming inbound mission trip, right? Or maybe invite them to the rodeo or just show them around Houston a little bit and make it so that, you know, the relationship between the two cities means something, right? You're a sister city. So invite them over here. Maybe they'll invite you over there. And from there you build the trust. And then from there, the deals start yeah. getting referred back. And, forth. and I believe our, our international advisory group, we've definitely done that with AMPI, which yeah. is oh, kind yeah. of the yes. equivalent yeah. of uh, Mexico's NAR. Right. right. So, uh, but we we built such a great relationship mm, with them. Right. And and here again, getting your CIPS is is the first step. You have to go get involved, and um, it's cool because when you get your CIPS, Teresa, you may like Mexico and be more interested in Mexico, where uh, Pais, you may be interested in Germany. You have to go to these other countries, just like we invite them here. They love the invitation. They love learning about real estate here and make networking here. But you as a realtor, if you're going to get involved in global real estate, you have to go to these other countries. That's and true. it's That's easy to true. do. You get, on, you get on the NAR CIPS page, you be active on that page. Every time I go to another country, I'm going on there asking people, hey, would you like to meet for coffee? Do you have some time showing us real estate? So it's super I mean, easy to connect on the CIPS page. It's super easy to connect um, to the TR global committees, to the NAR global the committees. This is all how you, how you uh, build your network. And there's a ton of Facebook, LinkedIn pages for you just to jump on and interact every day because every day somebody's asking for a referral in Houston, somebody's asking for a referral in Mexico. So for me, man, it's, a lot of our referrals have come to having our CIPS and being active on CIPS. And I know for all of y'all as well. Another good example, I think, of um, going to meet the people, building the relationship is our trip when we went to Belize. 
So last year, he was the chair, Pius is the chair of our HAR Global. And with the help of Ed, who knows a lot of people in Belize, put together an outbound trip for a group of realtors from Houston and did Dallas. Come? And Dallas. Austin. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Austin. David was there. Yeah. And we went down to Belize, met um, all a bunch of Belize developers, got to visit all these different properties. It was super fun, but also very informative, very educational. Pius took a day and went around and met all the different brokerages and actually came home with how many listings? Uh, 134 listings. Right. He actually signed listing agreements while we were there and brought home 134 listings from Belize. So this is another example of how going there and meeting the people and you know getting to know them and building their trust, how it actually develops into business in the future. International Day. We have uh, our, our annual International Day yes. coming up November 10th. Uh, so you can still sign up. It's a great uh, opportunity to learn from experts, from the mortgage, from the immigration uh aspects of global real estate so i invite all of y'all to sign up for our um annual international day which is november 10th november 10th okay so it'll be all virtual yeah. this year as well right yeah. okay all right so i think you were a little confused because we put the raw brisket in there that should have taken eight hours to cook <laughs> but yet we took out a fully cooked it's brisket. Magic. Magic. It's magic. Absolutely so, magic. Can you explain how that just happened? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we threw uh, the brisket on the pellet grill last night or the night before in Dallas, Texas, and we uh, smoked uh, a brisket. Uh, so we'd have something to show you what it's supposed to look like and what, you know, for my friends, obviously everybody wants to taste it. So, um, here again, we put it in the pellet grill, we set it at 225, and we cooked it for an hour and 15 minutes per pound, and or until we got the interior temperature of the brisket to 160. So with that being said, I think we can unwrap the brisket, and I've cut it two different ways. Uh, these are ways that you would see at your barbecue uh, um, restaurants. I've sliced it uh, nice and thick uh so you can see how thick it is uh, you can pull it apart and it just really just pulls apart because it's really come out pretty moist uh, and it should taste really pretty good uh if you like it sliced a lot of times it's going to be a little bit thinner okay um then i have chopped it if we can see how i've chopped it for like a chopped beef sandwich this uh often i will chop this up uh, tomorrow morning and throw it in my eggs with the tortilla, Texas style. Uh, so uh, today we're going to eat it with a nice salad and beans and potato salad, coleslaw. We got everything to go to the side. Uh, Pius, would you like to take a little bite? We'll let you be the, the, the taste tester. You'd be the first tester, Pius. I'm just going to give you a slice of uh, What do you think? Mm. Is it good? Mm. What is your What is your favorite kind of sauce, uh, Ed? Um, there's a ton of them, but uh, there's a uh, barbecue place here in in Houston, Texas, yeah. as well as Dallas called Rudy's, and uh, <laughs> this is uh, one that's a little spicy. Uh, a lot of people would rather have a sweet uh, barbecue sauce, but I like a little spice to mine. So Rudy's barbecue sauce is um is Your my choice. favorite okay any questions that is so tender it's like eating a filet mignon mm. I, I, is it really I, I guess i gotta cut oh some God. for the girls that's rude that i let pius go first but <laughs> i wanted to make sure it was safe for uh susan and and teresa to taste it we're so mean. Everybody's looking at all this wonderful food and i bet you're all hungry <laughs> come on susan coming in Coming in. Should you get some quick. for Claudia? We'll get Claudia. Claudia, you want a bite? <laughs> <laughs> Camera woman working hard. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, isn't that good? Mm. I love Texas. I do too. <laughs> so We're all blessed. Mm. You know, I think to be here in Texas, uh, the real estate market is unbelievable. 
Uh, that it is. A great place to live. Cost of living is awesome here. We have a little bit of a traffic problem, but other than that, and some humidity, uh, I think uh, we're lucky to uh, be realtors slash brokers here in, in town. And uh, sure. I want to thank HJR for um, allowing us to do this today uh, with TR. Uh, it's been a pleasure for us to do it. I love sharing uh, secrets from my dad. And um, what else do y'all have to It's not a share? secret anymore. It's not a secret anymore. <laughs> All right, so to recap, we had the raw brisket. We injected it with apple juice. Uh -huh. Then we squirted it with mustard. mustard. Just regular and mustard. With mustard. Regular yellow mustard. And then we put, you want to show the John Rubs. Henry rub? Yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of rubs here again, as they're covered with mustard here. But uh, <laughs> John Henry is, is one that I've used. It comes from barbecues galore uh, in Dallas and Houston. I don't, do you all have barbecues galore here? We do. So uh, it, um, it's something that they carry. Um, now, man, just about everywhere has rubs because Home Depot, I was in Lowe's the other day and I was and surprised. <laughs> Lowe's has a hundred different rubs. Wow. So all different flavors. And so, what else can you smoke in that thing besides a brisket? Um, chicken, turkeys that generally get a little bit too dry, but uh, probably chicken, uh, pork. A lot of people like pork, uh, whether it be a whole pig or just a pork butt. Uh, if you've had pulled pork, pork so that's something that you would normally uh, smoke on a smoker because um, you generally smoking, you're going to have a lot of flavor and a lot of juice, and, and that's what pulled pork is about, being really moist. Okay, and then when you put it in there, you didn't wrap it. Remember you said you just put the whole raw meat in there? Right. So it was all the oils and juices just falling into the... Into the deal, actually, yes, and it comes out and goes into the bucket and usually my dog is the uh, beneficiary <laughs> as I pour all the juice onto her dog food. But we don't wrap it until we, we want the smoke to get into the brisket. So for the first six, seven, eight hours, we're gonna let the smoke, you know, get absorbed by the meat before we wrap it. Wrapping it just kind of keeps the juices and doesn't let it dry out so much. Okay, all right. And when they say um, brisket rings, what brisket ring. About? Let's see if we is can show a brisket ring. This is actually a good example. Let me, yeah, here, here's, let me just show the brisket ring. If you can see, if you can go in real close, right, this little ring right here that literally goes around pink, the meat. The pink, yeah, the, the pink, pink ring. That is the brisket ring, the smoke ring. So when you have a really good smoke ring, you can see it on all these pieces of meat, how it, it's just sunk in. And uh, that's the extra little bit of flavor slash bark of the brisket. Perfect, perfect. And I think we have made it to the end of our Global Cook and Learn. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And we have a request for the uh, recipes to be posted and how to sign up for CIPS and different things on here. So we will, oh, one question, plastic wrap or wax paper? Wax paper. Wax paper. Yeah. Okay. All different flavors. Okay. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed it, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all very much. I appreciate y'all helping me out today. You're welcome. It's been a blast. Thank awesome. You. Yeah. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you all so much for joining this event. And a huge thank you to Ed Eakin, Teresa Hill, Susan and Nora, and Pius Dawson. And none of this could have happened without an amazing behind the scenes work from HER's Director of Video Services, Claudia Hernandez, and Director of Meetings and International, Lori Carper. Make sure to stay tuned for upcoming Cook and Learn webinars in this series and look out for a replay of this session on the Texas Realtors YouTube channel under our Global Commercial and Diversity playlist. Thank you all so much again and have a wonderful Thursday. Bye. Bye. Bye.